Hello and welcome to Anderson's TV. My name is Jack Duxbury. I'm Ben Champion. How are you doing? And this is our very first Behringer bundle of modular synth stuff, right? That's the chap, definitely. Ben is our modular expert and he's going to show you what you can do with this thing and why you might want to buy it. This bump. Ben, please explain to me what we have in front of us and why we're doing such a thing. Why are we doing a Behringer mm. bundle? New stuff. And we have a selection of the range. This is M flavored. Let's, let's put it that way. It's, it's M flavored. This one is designed for, designed for <laughs> <laughs> somebody who maybe has a synth. And they go, oh, I've heard about modular, I've heard. It's kind of scary though. And you've looked at the prices and then just run in the opposite direction, right? That's, that's just no good. This comes in, do you want to tell us the price, Jack? You want to how much for, this is a little bit uh, All I know is adjusted. it's under £600. Pounds. <laughs> Indeed. At the moment, and check the website because you never know what Boris is up to. <laughs> but that excites me. And that's powered and everything, right? Yep, case, power. Uh, ignore this, that's just helping us record. But it's a full synth on its own. It's a great addition to other synths if you already have something semi-modular flavoured. Think Behringer Neutron, think... Archuria Mini Brute. It's an accessory, it's standalone. Um, you won't have this, so you have room to expand. Take it in your own direction. So if you, bought, if you buy this from us, this is, there's a little gap there. To yeah, th there'll be a nice, a nice gap for you. That's, you can see we've got our cables in for recording purposes only at the moment. And that's cool. Again, if you're a complete novice to this, you might think, oh, I don't, I don't want the gap. But the whole point is that you're going to this is setting you off on the journey, right? Yeah, it, it's difficult to prescribe something with modular. That's with the bundles. You could go, oh, have all of this. But you're like, oh, I don't want to. I don't want to do that. Mm. So you've got room to take it in your own direction. What we can do today for you beginners out there, we're going to go right from zero. We're going to go all the way through patching up a monosynth sound, which a lot, of, a lot of tutorials sometimes assume a base level of understanding, but we're going to go from zero and we're going to go straight through to hero. Jack's going to do some shredding. It's going to sound great. Well, let's do it. If you've already got synths, you'll know you press a key, sound happens. You can flick through presets and it's a fun time. Everybody knows that. It's great fun. With modular, if you're trying to do a synth voice, just a normal monosynth, you've got to start from this. It, Nothing, essentially. So we're going to go through, we're going to teach you how it works and why we're doing what we're doing. In this system, we have two oscillators in this corner. And at the moment, if you plug one in, they'll just keep going. They just keep doing their thing forever. We have outputs on the bottom and I'm going to go plug it in over to our sort of sound card, essentially, over here, little mixer. Business end of this cable, we're going to listen to the sawtooth of our first oscillator, the lovely 921. Turn it up. So it's just going to keep doing that forever and it sounds terrible and it's pointless. Mm -hmm. So what next? We're going to need some kind of control, right? So we have the lovely Archeria key step, alternatives are available, and it has a pitch output which is one of these, I think it's this one. Let's have a quick Gandramus. Magi. Yes, indeed. Our pitch cable, sending a lovely analog pitch signal. Pitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. Sorry. I don't get the reference. <laughs> Sorry, he's the dude. Damn it. He's no. The, he's, the, he's the dude who does the videos for Sweetwater. I knew that. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. I swear I'm on YouTube, honestly. Oh God, that's the last pun. Because when I see this, I just think puns. I see Excellent. knobs, Nobby Williams, all of it. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm there for the puns. It, um, damn it, Jack, shut up. <laughs> More puns to come, stay tuned. No, carry on, I'm sorry. <laughs> you're, you're right there. Anyway. <laughs> I'm being an idiot. Pitch Gallagher on this cable. We're going through <laughs> frequency control inputs. Because this is M flavored and vintage, they have some funny labeling, but frequency control inputs. That's where our pitch goes. Right. Now, have at it. Well, that's more musical, isn't it? Lovely, but it's still just droning on and on forever, which isn't, isn't ideal. So our first or second port of call will be to stop the drone of death. <laughs> We're gonna need volume control, essentially. Volume says amplifier to me. Don't know about you, Jack. Yep. What we can do, 
Let's intercept our chain. Let's go into this voltage controlled amplifier. We have a signal in and a signal out. Let's follow those, shall we? More patch cables. So you come out the saw wave mm -hmm. into here. Absolutely. And then into our little sound card or mixer. Turn it up and suddenly nothing's happening. We have a little volume control over here. Now we've got volume control, but you know, we want to be able to do it without. That's not convenient. On the key step, if I untangle this a smidge, yeah. we also have a gate output. If you think of a pun on the gate. Gate bush. Gate. He's on fire. Okay, so we take gate bush <laughs> <laughs> and we have control inputs on the bottom. We'll plug it in. Aha, we're sounding more like a keyboard. So a gate is going to be, you press the key down, the voltage goes up. That means on. There we are, nice and simple. But you can hear it's just a on off. But if you have a, a quick play, that's fairly usable, right? I mean, yeah. that's, it's not. There's just no shape. Yeah, it's not got finesse, but mm -hmm. it, it's functional and it works. And that's as simple as you can get. That's a playable mono synth. So we've got pitch over here. Yeah. We've got a gate. We've got an amplifier. And we've got our, got our sorts. That's great. Lovely. What else have we got in there? What can we do? What would you like to do first? Would you like a little bit more smoothness, legato or something? Perhaps? For me, with, the, with that volume when it comes in, mm. I like a little bit of shape to the sound. Like, and I, I find that that mimics like on a piano, we, it, go, it comes in really yeah. hard and then it dies away. Lovely. And that's an easy thing that we can do with this fantastical envelope generator. Um, this one, because it is M flavoured, um, <laughs> it has an S trig in. This is a vintage thing. We have a lovely setting on the Arturia key step that lets us use S triggs. Let me get that oh. doing its thing. So you're changing that on your computer so this sends the right... Exactly. Let me explain that quickly. The gate that we had earlier, press the key down, the voltage goes up, things turn on, it makes logical sense. In the vintage world, they did it the other way around. The gate output of a keyboard would always be high, and when you press the key it went low, and that triggered things, and that is what an S trig is backwards, vintage, and annoying. So you just need to be aware of it and compensate either by having Archeria key step or other options are available, or you can make your I own think cables. Be Behringer have done their Behringer own. Behringer have one. <laughs> They've done their own one of these. They have, or an attenuverter will, will do it. Just, just, you're just flipping it upside down. That's all you're doing. Cool. And now we can remove, oh, it was a gate bush, gate bush. Yeah. S trig in. <gasps> we've broken everything. Now what we need to do is take a look at what we've just done. When we press a key now, we're triggering the envelope generator. On its own doesn't do anything really, but it has an output. Let's plug that output in back to where Gatebush was earlier. That's what I'm talking about. So there's a little bit of shape to the note. Exactly. Like a little bit of the hill in there. Can I get a That's bit more? Want. A little bit more one you want. Yeah, well, also, what are the different stages called again? Attack, decay, sustain, and release. Mm -hmm. it. Attack will be the, or onset, it's sometimes called. Decay will be coming down towards when you've just got the note held down. Towards where you set the sustain, right? Exactly, so it's gonna be useful for making kind of plucky type sounds, most of it. Yeet. Pretty plucky. And we can have that long tail as well. Yeah. 
something like really, I don't know if it's psychosomatic, but mm. this does have that modular brashness that I find that like, everything seems a bit more open and um, unprocessed when I work with modular stuff. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of areas where we can really get the beans going as well in, in this particular setup. So we'll visit that That's cool. shortly, I believe. So we've got that. We can control the shape of the volume with that envelope. What other bits do we get in our bundle? Let's have some tonal control, shall Yarp. we? This is definitely not the only source of tonal control, but it's the most classic of the options. A voltage controlled low pass filter. This one being the 904A. Filters are gonna be your primary and most familiar sound shaping tool. And we'll listen to it now. What we have to do, unplug this chappy. So, Reminder, our little sawtooth output, mm -hmm. nice buzzy sound. We're now going to go to the signal in on our filter output and pop it back to where it was in that VCA. So I'm going to open the filter all the way up, turn the regeneration down. That's not a word I've, I've seen on a filter for a long time, but uh, no. fire away. <laughs> And that's just a plain Jane filter. The great thing that we've got will be regeneration. Regeneration, Q, uh, resonance, peak. Anything else? I think that's oh, it. right. So it's another word for yeah. that. They all mean the same. So let's 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 hear that, shall we? A famous characteristic of this one. Bit of low end gone. What a classic noise. Is this uh, modelled after the old... The old stuff. The old stuff. The big stuff. So one thing that's so spectacular about this Behringer stuff is the price difference. So the original stuff, the original M-flavoured modular equipment, r way back in, what, actually late 50s potentially and, and 60s um, is going to be really big you know quarter inch patch cables and now if you buy the vintage stuff it's just prohibitively expensive even the modern recreations like dot com modular and the 5u it's horrifying in price i think most of these modules are close to if not quite considerably below the 100 pound mark compared to you know three to a thousand pounds ago and then we stuck them in together in a bundle where you can save even more for under 600 pounds come on mate it's great and these ones um they do have a slightly different flavor from the the classic m sound because the, the vintage one had a bit more drive in there um because of the asymmetric waveforms that's really boring but i think that's that, that's kind of why it is so we've got tonal control now yeah we can go further come on what I would normally do as a modular nerd is break out the humble, tip-top, stackable cable, but you might not have any of those, so we have multiples. This is just a way of duplicating a signal. Most useful when you've got something like this here envelope generator, and you want to control two things with it, because that's doing our volume at the moment, right? But let's have a little bit of movement on the filter. What we'll do is take our output from the envelope generator, plug it into one slot on the multiple. I'm going to grab and then some different does cables. Does this give us three? Three copies. Three copies mm -hmm. of that signal. Cool. So we'll grab one, pop it back to where it was doing our volume. This should still function now. Love it. And grab another copy, plug that into the control input on our filter. go 
what we can do next, because that's that's perfectly great. You could do a little cheeky synth solo on that. You could do some pretty chubby bass lines if you shove down here. Delicious. Okay. We've got a sneaky second oscillator over here. Come on. <laughs> let's pipe it in. The way you're going to want to do this, let's grab Pitch Gallagher. I love it. <laughs> Pitch <laughs> McConnell. We're, we're going to go and duplicate it yep. like we just did. Extract some cables. One copy. Very thoughtful. You're getting quite a lot of stuff going yeah, on here. Loads of stuff. We, we, haven't, we haven't done nothing yet. Oh. Right. So one copy going back to where it was, yeah. and we're now going to go for what's confusingly called a 921AB link frequency. That really is confusing. Yeah, that's pitch. Vintage naming, folks. Um, now, all we're going to hear is our first oscillator, but we want to have both at once. That's why we've got a mixer. So let's get these plugged in. I'm just going to use some shorter cables for less visual clutter. Grab a sawtooth there, go into one input, and a sawtooth there into another. We've got volume controls for these. Mm -hmm. Now, where am I looking? The input to our filter shall now connect to the output of our mixer. I'm so glad you're here. Love it. There we go. So now this should be basically what we were just listening to. We have a third oscillator. Jeez the wish. There's an auxiliary out waveform thing on this big fat oscillator over here. So let's grab that. Ooh. Plug it in. So you've got a three oscillator monitor there. Yeah, we do. Let's have a square wave on that because why, why not? Here we go. Lovely stuff. This second oscillator has this convenient low setting on the octave selector. So if you want an LFO for slowly modulating a filter or pulse width modulation or something, if you know, you know, but that is available there. We've made it. We've made a, a pretty decent that's, little synth. So that's, that's the one thing I saw in my limited knowledge. I was like, where's the LFO? But this bad boy can be your LFO. Absolutely. And just to clarify, mm. maybe other, what, yes. what, have we, what are we doing with this at the end? At the moment, it's just a convenient way of getting into the recording world. Modular stuff, actually not this stuff, but most modular stuff is really, really loud, much louder than your typical keyboard, which can uh, be a little bit of a pain. If you plug it into a mixer, it might be super, super loud. And if you turn the gain all the way down, it might still be distorting. So if you don't have a pad or something on your interface or mixer, these are really handy because it will convert super super spiky modular level mm -hmm. into normal line level right. that things can understand with this modular uh, the behringer modular stuff it's actually a bit quieter so you'll probably be fine plugging into a mixer uh, audio interface you're kind of away and other just to touch on other bits you get in this bundle a random signal generator yep so this one white noise pink noise let's listen to it shall we oh White noise will be most familiar. We can add that into our sound. So if you keep... You can add that in for a little bit of texture, grit. It's also useful for some advanced techniques later that we can get into in uh, part two. Yeah. And the attenuators. Super handy. Let's say when we were using our filter, we didn't want quite, a, quite a, a sharp kind of thing. Let's actually do that now. So our envelope generator is currently giving us that little extra hint of brightness at the beginning. Let's say 
we wanted it to be a bit more subtle and have a little bit of something else going on, you'll hear it, but let's patch it in. We will take, through the mess of wires, the copy of, here it is, that will be our envelope generator that was modulating our filter. Let's go into an attenuator and plug it back into where it was. Now if you play Captain Sir, <gasps> nothing's happening. That's because an attenuator is, it is a volume control. Yeah, that's all it is. It's a volume control. But in this case, it can be really useful for just limiting how mad your sound gets. So if you uh, jam away. So at the moment we've got the filter all the way closed. What if you wanted to make your bass sound kind of like this? But you still wanted an extra hint of brightness, the attenuator is kind of essential at this point. If you don't want it, you know, fully brassy and open, you have that control over here. Awesome! That's the whole thing. We've done it. You've We've done, done it. All. You've done it. What well, a mate! Amazing. Thanks so much, brother. And thank you. Thanks for watching. If you like what we're doing, consider subscribing. If Please you don't, do. let us know. Ben, check out the other videos coming out around here because we're taking. With all of this is coming into stock, right? Yeah, it's it's filtering in. It's available. The bundles might not necessarily be all in stock at once, um, but get your name on that list, and we'll. Uh, I'll let you know. Yeah, wicked. Thanks for watching, guys. See ya. Mm -hmm.